my name is Artemis and this week we are continuing the big fursuit guide by detailing the different builds of fursuit and the very important considerations you should make before you decide which one you want. And because we recognise that 20 minutes is probably a little bit too long for a video, we'll try our hardest to keep the run time down and, you know, keep things interesting as much as we can, you know. So we're talking about mini partials all the way up to goddamn digi fursuits and plush suits. We're talking about ease of wear and travel and we're talking about it right now. Let's get into it. So by now you would have realized that not all fursuits are built the same and there are many different builds of them. And while it can be said that uh, the full body suit is the quintessential furry fursuit, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the perfect suit for everybody and every purpose. Just look at Artemis. He's a cultured, sophisticated, civilized dogger who wears people clothes. So there's really no point for him to have a body suit and be a full body suit really, is there? I mean, at least not yet. It's so easy to get sucked into the bullshit that fursuits only really matter if they're full body suits because there are so many ways for fursuits to look amazing. Indeed there are, and we're going to go through all of them now. Or most of them at least. Starting off at the lightest, we have just a head. Just a head, nothing else. Like, it's just that easy. You have that head, it is the most iconic part of the suit most of the time, and if you don't have the head, then a full digi suit won't look right. And you can wear whatever clothes, just go barehanded, maybe wear gloves, and just go. You got a head, what else do you need? It's nice and light, it's nice and easy, it's a good starting point. Add a tail and some hand paws, and you've got yourself a mini partial, which honestly is a really great way of suiting. It should be like everybody's first engagement into suiting, I feel, because it's nice and light. You can add in little things like outfits and boots and really nice looks, and it's really, it's not heavy. Like you can get used to the head, you can get used to the lack of movement when it comes to like hands and stuff, not being able to grab stuff, get used to the vision without having this massive overheating bodysuit on. And it's nice and easy to just take on and off when you need to. And you got the full partial, which typically adds feet and sleeves, and that's about as much fur as I'm comfortable showing if you look at me. I'm a good example, I guess, of that. And this one's really good because it rounds off the look quite nicely, but it still lets you have that lightness, that ease of wear, that mix and matching of outfits. But you cover all furry bases. You got all the paws, the tail, the sleeves, the lot. You look typically furry without getting into the real heavy bodysuit. But adding legs or torso can make this a half suit, typically done with the legs. This is the closest you can get to a full suit, really, without it being a full suit. And yeah, you can go plan to grade, you can go digit to grade as well, if I can say that fucking word right. Um, this is obviously going to be a lot heavier. This is going to be quite a step up from the full partial. So this is something that you're going to notice a lot more with heat and mobility issues. It's going to definitely take a toll on you. And then of course there are the bodysuits as well. The 100% coverage. All of you is fluffy and fursuited. These have the greatest level of design options because you know you've got a whole body to play around with. But they might be the dream go-to for a lot of people but they do have certain drawbacks and considerations to make which I mean, we'll get into that. That's what the video is about. Now, there are some differences to be found in the bodysuits as well. Typically, that comes with the padding. Now, I've said like plantar grade and digitigrade. grade. There we go. A couple of times. And what that actually means is whether they walk on the flat of their foot or up on the toes. Um, it's something that you'll see. Have a look at the like the rear legs of a dog. It's that sort of pattern. It alters the shape and the feel of the legs and it is much heavily padded. So that is going to be quite different. There are a lot of variations you can have. Not everybody's going to want that. Not everybody uses that. And of course, there are different variations you can make with the bodysuit itself. Like, for instance, you know, the crotch. I mean, you can take the crotch, make it drop. That's a drop drop crotch fursuit really changes up the look with a drop crotch fursuit. All right, just stop, stop, stop. But then you've also got things like the plush suit as well, which can be planty or digi, but it's typically padded all the way over. It is literally a plushie that you wear. And, you know, sometimes they even have attached hands and feet, which means it's extra difficult to get into and out of. And, you know, it's it's comfortable as fuck, I bet. But that's pretty intense when it comes to the heat. So as you can see with all these different varieties of fursuit build, it can be very tricky for you to think exactly what it is you want. You can look at a fursuit and decide this is what I want. But there are other considerations to make as well. It's not always just down to how the suit is going to look. And we're going to go through some of those practicalities, the things you really do need to consider before you pour a lot of money into this investment. 
Now, obviously, when it comes to fursuiting, you're going to want to go out and about with this suit. You're not just going to stay at home. You're going to want to go to conventions and meets and hell. Just fursuiting in public can be a really fun experience and a big attraction of the entire thing. But it's not just as easy as throwing everything into a bag and going out the front door. No, there are a lot of things to consider when it comes to commissioning a fursuit, especially from the mindset of, I'm going to be traveling around the country, maybe even the world, with this giant padded costume. Okay, so travel from a fursuit perspective. There's a lot of things to consider here, so let's make ourselves a little list, shall we? First of all, how big is the suit? How much of it do you have? Is it just something nice and quick and easy? For instance, just a head, the hands, paws, some, you know, a tail that you can just stick all in one thing? Or have you got a fucking gigantic, fully padded, digi plush suit that's going to take an army to move? Are you going to be able to travel that easy? Is it going to be just a lot to contend with? How is it built? Are you having the suit built with like resin parts and stuff like that, which is very fragile, very easy to break? Is it going to be very heavy because of that? Are you going to have to worry about how things are attached because they might fall off in transit? If so, can you fix that on the go as well? Or are you going for something that's all foam based and squishy that you might be able to squash down, that might be able to bounce back up again? You might even be able to vacuum pack the kind of thing. How are you going to want the suit to be made can really impact a lot of this. How modular is the suit? You know, is it all fully attached? Have you got attached feet, attached hands? Or can you pack those separately, carry those in other bags? Are they things that you can perhaps swap out if you need to? Is it something that's fully attached and you're worried about if the tail's going to stay on? Or is that something separate that if you decide you don't want to deal with the bodysuit, you can just wear on your normal clothes? And then how heavy is this thing? Is this thing nice and light and easy that you can move around with? Or is this something that's going to take off all the goddamn weight allowance on the airline and you're going to struggle to actually take some real clothes over with you? You're going to be happy lugging this thing around all the time? Or is it going to be nice and easy for you? Do you see how these things start to pile up? Do you see how all of these options can have a knock-on effect that affect other things? And while they might look great and potentially be really comfortable and feel great, they also have a lot of drawbacks in some cases that you need to think about. Did you consider this before you commissioned the suit? Because you need to. Do you see now how these realities can potentially become limiting factors? We're not even be started yet. We've only scratched the surface. And then beyond that, there are practical considerations to make as well. We're going to make our own list. I mean, what are you packing it in? What kind of case are you going to take? Have you thought about that far ahead? This thing can be very fragile, can be damaged very easily. So you're going to need a nice, sturdy case for that. But that can be very heavy and expensive. And have you checked with the airline? Are they happy to take that kind of size of case? Because, you know, a small suit will fit in a small case nice and easy. Maybe even your hand luggage, if you're lucky, take the head on. But the full body suit that needs to go in a hold luggage, you're going to be paying extra on tickets for that. Is it going to be able to survive? I mean, airline handlers aren't exactly the most secure things in the world. So is it going to be able to take a few knocks? Are you going to feel comfortable putting your expensive suit in that case as you travel? What's the suit made of? Is it padded? Is it stuffed? Is it resin? Does it have hard pieces? Are they going to be difficult to pack and difficult to take with you when you go on an adventure like this? Are you going to be able to vacuum pack some of this down to save on space? Because that can really help quite a bit. Are you going to be able to vacuum pack the entire suit? condense it down into just one bag because that would be amazing really, wouldn't it? Or is this something that's going to take up an entire massive trunk all to itself? and you're going to be terrified that things are going to snap off and break. How easy is this to pack? Is this something that you can just put in several bags and just take with you? Is this something you can vacuum pack down and you can just smash it straight in there and you're absolutely fine? Or is this very intricate? Do you have to sort of Tetris this in place? Because the TSA might want to have a look in this bag and are you going to be able to just take it out and put it all back in when you've got someone who's very annoyed having to search through this weird fucking costume? Because trust me, I've done that. It's not fun, especially when you pack like shit. This isn't obviously meant to scare everybody, this is just something that you do need to take into consideration when you get this suit, especially if you do want to travel around with it, because it's so easy to forget. I want to be a big fluffy dog, and then suddenly, how the fuck do I get it across an ocean? And this is all just getting to the convention. Then there's the convention itself to consider. So, you made it to the convention, you managed to figure out how to travel, and you did all the stuff, and you're here now, and you're ready to suit up and have a good time. But... Have you really considered what that's going to mean for the type of suit that you have? Alrighty then, let's build up another checklist, shall we? We've got the first suit location. Have you figured out where you're going to suit up and how much space you're really going to need? Are you going to need facilities? Are you going to need a lot of space to spread out, unpack everything, and actually be able to suit up 
properly? Or have you got something that you can just sort of dip into a corner, take your head, hands, sleeves, tail, out your bag, just stick them on and go? Is this something that you're gonna need a lot of time for when you're in that space? You're gonna need a lot of facilities like water and a drying rack maybe? You're gonna be able to keep it clean in there? Or can you just out of the bag, on the body, go, when I'm done, off the body, in the bag, go? How easy is it to actually suit up? Is this something that you can just slip on and off? Or is this something that's got a bit of a process to it that you've got to do in a certain order? Have you figured out how to get the bodysuit on, but then you can't quite reach your feet to be able to put your fucking foot paws on properly? Are you going to need someone else to help you with that, for instance? Have you thought about the Under Armours? Are you going to need those for the type of seat you've got? Are you going to need like a cooling vest? What if you wear glasses? Have you thought about that? Can you see properly out the head already? Are you going to overheat to the point where you won't be able to wear glasses? glasses and then you're just fucking blind. How long is it going to take? Are people going to be waiting on you? Are you going to get fed up with having to take so long? If it takes this long, are you going to be less likely to want to suit and de-suit or maybe you'll stay out longer? Even then, what is your range in this suit? How far can you go before you need to de-suit? How far can you go? How long can you go before you overheat? Are you going to be able to stray all that far from the location where you're suited up? Or are you going to have to stay pretty close just in case it gets too much to you and you have to dip back in? And this is all just getting to the fluffy fun times. And even then, there are still more things to consider when you're actually suiting. For instance, a handler. Are you going to need a handler when you're walking around? Are you in a very light suit so it doesn't matter too much? Can you see pretty well because of the options that you took and you can move around pretty well because you're not in a full body suit? Or are you in something that's incredibly padded with a tail that's dragging behind you on the floor and you're going to need people to keep you out of other people's way and potentially out of danger? Beyond that, even just getting into the suit, are you going to be able to do it on your own? Or are you going to need someone there as well? If you start to de-head, if you've got attached hands and whatnot, can you even do that? Are you going to need that help, someone to sort you out if you start to overheat? Speaking of heat, how's the heat in this suit? Have you got a partial suit where you can easily de-head? Your outfit has a lot of impact on the heat of the suit itself? Or have you gone for full body and padded and you're going to overheat a lot more? Are you going to have to be conscious of weather conditions? Because if it's too sunny, you might not be able to go out that long. Are you able to de-suit quickly if you need to? If you start to struggle with the heat, can you drink even in the suit? Is that possible? Or are you going to need to take hands and head off to get a thing of water? Because you're going to need that quite a lot. But then talking about fluids, what about the bathroom? What if it's taking you all this time to get suited up and then suited back down and you're dying to answer the call of nature? Are you able to just, you know, if it's a partial again, if it's something small, head off, hands off, go in, have a slash, go back out? Or are you trapped in a full body plush suit that's going to take an age to get back off again and then you've got your under armors to deal with? Because if you're someone who's gonna need to get to the bathroom very quickly, maybe that option isn't for you. And even beyond that, what about the wear and tear of the suit itself? Have you gone for a suit that's got a lot of breakable parts, a lot of very fragile parts? Have you gone for a suit that's going to get dirty very easy? Have you gone for a suit with massive, big, plushy, squishy indoor foot paws that you're then going to go and walk around on a convention floor with all of these other people who are wearing shoes that's going to be very dirty? Have you gone for nice plush pads that, for instance, are going to get destroyed because of the wear and tear because they're not built for walking around all over the place. Have you got a tail that drags on the floor? Because if so, are you ready to sew that back up if it breaks? Have you got a case for it? Is that an option that you really wanted to go for? If you're like me and tall as fuck and I was to get a suit, are you gonna be brushing the ceilings with the ears of that suit? Because these are other considerations to make. This is all very important stuff to consider. And again, not meant to be scary, obviously. It's just something that if you are wanting to suit up a lot at conventions that you really do need to put some thought into because it will become a reality very quickly and potentially a limiting factor as well. And you're gonna wanna know this before you suit up and go out. In fact, you're gonna wanna know it before you plan the suit and put money down on it. So why are we trying to make fursuiting sound like a miserable thing and put you off the idea? Well, we are not. In fact, we are just trying to highlight some of the real realities and considerations that come into commissioning a fursuit, beyond the way it looks, but how you're actually going to deal with it all. There are so, so many options and amazing things that you can do with a fursuit, and we all see these pictures and these convention videos and think, oh my god, that's amazing, they look so cute, I want that as well. But we never really consider the hassles that could have come from just getting to that convention because of those those options. That reality is 
rarely considered. And this is why it's so vitally important to think things through before you put the money down. Because, I mean, hell, a massive, gigantic, super fluffy plush suit with all of the added extras might be the most comfortable and amazing thing to wear around your house. But if you can't find a case big enough to get it to America or to get it to any convention, then are you really going to get the use out of it that you wanted to? And even if you do, have you really considered what it's going to be like to walk around with this massive plushy suit on in the middle of June? Because that can really change things, can't it? Too often we get caught up in how we want a suit to look rather than how that suit is going to be to store, to travel with, to wear, to move around with. And it's sometimes something that you need to really think about when you're putting this money down because once you've spent the money and it's been made, changes can't always come so easily. Once you've committed to this, this is what you have. This is what it's going to be like. Are you going to be happy with that? And the same thing goes for your body as well. What if you have changes in your body? Exactly. When you are eager to get that suit, you often forget that your body can fluctuate and change. For instance, weight. No one ever wants to talk about it because it's a little bit taboo, but I've known people before who have struggled to get into their fursuit because they fluctuated in weight. We all do. We fluctuate in weight all the goddamn time. And the wait time between making a DTD and actually getting the final suit, you can be radically different. For instance, Aaron once lost eight stone, like a hundred pounds, in the space of fucking, what was that, 18 months or so? That's a lot. That's a lot. Some people have waited longer for their first suit to arrive. Okay? What happens if it goes the other way? What happens if you order the suit and you can't fit into it again? You are sort of tied to that body type. It's so vital that you think about all of these options when it comes to getting a fursuit because the thrill of, oh my god, I'm gonna get a fursuit, I'm gonna bring my character to life, is so powerful that often we all forget exactly what that can mean. And there are so many different options that we all just want the big option that sometimes you have to consider whether that's truly the best one for you. It might look good in your Instagram photos, but when you live the reality of dealing with that suit, is it still going to be as good? Are you still going to enjoy it as much? Fursuits should be something that's fun and engaging and free for everybody, not financially, obviously, pay your creators. But it sucks when a lack of forethought can hold you back. Consider all options when you look at all options, because as much as there's loads of positives for every kind of suit, there's also some drawbacks to them as well. So there you have it, that's part two of the big first suit guide done. I'm not entirely sure exactly how many we're going to make of these, probably just a couple for now, and then maybe add to it later on. Who knows, we'll see how much we can talk about. Uh, next week we're probably going to be looking at all the different options you get with fursuit parts and whether it's form versus function and pros and cons and shit like that. Uh, for now though, I'll just leave you with the customary begging for money that the dog has become so fucking pathetic at. Hey, I'm not pathetic, alright? And if I am, then please pay me to shut up. Uh, no, 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 for real. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are enjoying this series. Uh, I hope it's more informative as well, because this is a lot of information to give out. Uh, and it's a lot of things I feel like people do need to consider and think about. But if you did like it, and you know, you, you would like to, maybe just, I don't know, have a look at this graphic right here that I've put up. And maybe see what it has to say. You know, it's some cool stuff right there. Also, we got t-shirts available again for the first time in like fucking ever. So if you did want some t-shirts, go and have a look at that. You might have seen, I might have put a graphic up to advertise them in the fucking video. Who knows? But otherwise, thank you for watching. We appreciate all the support that you give. And uh, we'll see you next week for whatever we come up with next week. Bye.